Hello friends of the FLX 4-H Learning Launchpad. I'm Renee Hopkins from Livingston County 4-H and I'm here to talk to you today about pressing plants. Pressing plants is a way to preserve flowers, leaves, and even whole plants. The idea is that we're going to remove the moisture or the water content from the plant material while keeping it nice and flat so that we can retain the shape. You can use pressed flowers to create framed artwork, note cards, bookmarks and sun catchers, even votive candle holders. If you press an entire plant, including blossoms, leaves, and roots, you can create what's called a herbarium, which is a collection of pressed plants. So there's a few materials that you'll need in order to successfully press plants at home. If you do have a plant press, I encourage you to use that. This is a really simple one that I made a couple years ago, and I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video. But if you don't have that, books are a great choice. This is a hardcover book that I pulled off my shelf this morning, and I just want to show you as I flipped through the pages what I found. This is a little four-leaf clover that I put in here many years ago, and it's beautifully preserved. Um, and it's been hanging out in the pages of this book since then. So books, this is just a simple hardcover book. Um, you want to make sure you pick a book that doesn't have uh, real glossy pages though, because remember we're trying to pull moisture out of the plant. So the more newsprinty and porous um, the pages are, the better that will happen. If you don't have a hardcover book, you can use a phone book as well. And we can just simply add something stiff to the top and the bottom of this to make sure that it lays really flat. An assortment of other papers will help as well. So I have, these are some recycled pages of computer paper. That works fine. If you don't have recycled, you can use, um, you know, just regular old copy paper. Lined paper can work as well. Newspaper is a great choice. And one of my favorite papers to use is actually packaging paper. I save this all the time. You just lay the pages out flat and store them until you need them. They come in handy for a lot of things. Uh, one thing you want to make sure of with paper is that it's not acid paper. If there's any acid in it, that will break down your plant material and you won't get a good preserved pressed plant. Um, uh, paper towel. You might think, well that wicks moisture really well. That's what it's made for, right? Um, this is not really a great choice though because if you can see on there, there's all kinds of little dots and a texture that's in the paper towel. So if you were to lay your plant material right along here and press it, your plant material is going to end up with the same pattern that's embedded in the paper towel. So this might come in handy um, as we sandwich it and make layers, but you wouldn't want to put your plant material directly against paper towel. I encourage you to label what you do. I am notorious for putting things in and thinking, oh, I'll remember what that was, and then I never do. <laughs> so post-it notes and a pen are a really handy tool to have so that you can identify what you've collected and when you've pressed it. And then you need your plant material. So if you're heading out for a short walk, you're gonna go out and come right back in 15 minutes or less, just a simple container. If you're after just the leaves and the flowers, scissors work great for that. If you want to collect the entire plant, including the root system, you're going to want to bring some sort of a garden tool, a trowel, a little shovel, something like that with you. If you're going to be outside for 15 minutes or more, it's important that you help your plant stay fresh until you get back inside. So I would encourage you to actually use the paper towel. In this case, dampen it. Don't You don't want it dripping wet. Just damp add that to your container and even put that within a cooler. As you collect things in here, they'll stay moist and um, they won't wilt on you before you get a chance to put them in your press. So let's go collect some plant material. Oh, we won't be going out today. Rainy weather is not a good time to collect plants. Now it stopped raining, but you can see that the blossoms aren't quite open yet. Last time to collect is in the late morning after the dew has dried and the flowers are open. Okay, conditions are great now, so let's take a look and see if we can collect some Johnny Jump Ups. You're looking for blossoms that are nicely open and in good shape. You don't want ones with a lot of insect holes or some that have begun to wilt already. So look them over and try to find a good sample. Then just snip them off 
you can keep the stem or you can snip the stem off. And don't forget to collect some leaves too. To collect a whole plant, you're gonna gently move all of the leaves to one side and insert a garden trowel or small shovel down the length of the root. Wiggle it around to loosen the soil and very gently try to remove the entire root system. This does take practice. All right, now we're ready to press. So I'm gonna use the phone book and some just plain computer paper for this, this round. I'm going to pull out, this is some oxalis. Got a couple of those I think in here. Um, and I think it's most effective if you put blossom side down first. So I'm gonna to try to lay that out and arrange it the best I can. Sometimes plants have a mind of their own. Um, it's important not to overlap any of your flowers or your plant material for a couple of reasons. One, that's going to slow your drying time now because you've got it stacked up um, and then they get stuck to each other and they can imprint patterns on one another. If that's what you're going for, you want to experiment, go for it. But in my case, I'm just trying to get individual um, specimens that I can use later. So I'm going to lay those down and I am going to write, actually write on this paper what these are. And today's date. So that I know when I go back and look later what they were. I also found some really good uh, coleus leaves. I think coleus is really pretty. There's always neat designs in the leaf patterns. So here's a little collection of those. Again, I'm going to put the top, what would be growing up, I'm going to put that down and spread them out. And they encourage you to do lots and lots of them because they don't always press the way that you anticipate they're going to. Um, so it's best to have a nice variety of them to choose from, um, depending on what you're doing. I think the coleus leaves would be really pretty in framed artwork. So I'm going to write that down too, and today's date as well. Then what I'm going to do is take a second sheet of computer paper and lay it right over the top. And this, a second set of hands is sometimes helpful. Um, especially if you have blossoms that seem to want to do their own thing. All right, so I'm going to, this phone book I can do several of these sandwich layers in. So I'm going to actually flip almost to the back of the book and slide this layer in. And you want to make sure that the paper I've used is a little bit bigger than the phone book, and that's okay. I just want to make sure all my plants are within the pages of the book, and they look to be. So I can close that. All right, so I'm so excited to check these out. It's been, I think, about three weeks since I first put the plants within the books. So it is time that we can take a check. I could have checked a week ago, just a peek to see if things were dried out yet. Um, but I got to the and forgot about them, which sometimes happens when you press plants. But let's take a look. That is beautiful. Look at that Johnny jump up. And you can see that they're holding their shape really well. Um, and it's not, it's not floppy at all. So I think this is pretty well preserved. I can leave it in here, or if I'm ready to make some artwork or something, this one is ready to use.
All right, let's check our phone book next. Now let's check our plant pack. Here is that whole dandelion plant that I've put in, and look at how awesome that is. All the leaves spread out there, the root all the way down to its little tap roots down here, um, and it's, it's actually dried out a lot more than I was expecting it to be. Um, I think because that root is so thick, if I was gonna put this in an herbarium and use it as a plant sample, I probably would keep it pressed for another week or two just to make sure I do have all the moisture out of that root, but to, to pinch it and feel it, it, it does feel pretty dry, so I'm pretty excited about that. If you want to make a simple plant press, this is one that we did as a workshop last spring in Livingston County 4-H. And I went to my local hardware store and I asked them to cut me 12 by 12 pieces of plywood. It's 3 quarter inch thick. I explained what I was trying to do um, and they helped me find the right materials. So this is what we chose. Um, I had the kids sand it down and then you used, we used Velcro, but you can use straps or a belt. Um, the idea is that you're gonna want something that you can use to close it up nice and tight. So this is the Velcro that has the hooks on one side and the loops on the other side. So it's all in one. And we cut out pieces that were long enough to stretch across it and wrap around the top. And we used to staple gun those down here and then cut two strips that lined up that would be the top of the press, making sure that we stapled the right um, direction for the Velcro. So these are the hooks on here, and I needed it to catch the loops on here. 